Alright, hello everyone. My name is Trevor Brown and I'm going to be teaching CS798 multi-core programming in Winter 21. So why multi-core? Well, multi-core systems are kind of ubiquitous these days. You know, the cell phone sitting on my desk has eight cores. The desktop I'm using right now has 12. So here if I open up HTOP on my desktop, you can see, you know, the CPU utilization of my 12 CPUs. And if you think about what it means to write software for these multi-core systems, if I write a single-threaded program and run it on the system and I saturate my CPU, I'm, I'm saturating a single CPU out of 12, you know, at best, I'm using 8.3% of the raw processing power of this machine. And as bad as it is to utilize only one twelfth of your machine, servers are even worse. Here's a large scale server from my lab with 256 CPUs. You know, running single threaded code, writing single threaded code for this machine is just a joke. You have to, to harness such a machine, really be able to write top tier, high performance multi threaded code. So what's this course about? Well, it's really about exactly that question. How can we efficiently harness dozens or hundreds of cores? And this is an important question because not only are these machines becoming ubiquitous quickly, but uh, it's not enough to write multi-threaded code. You have to write good multi-threaded code. And the performance difference on such a large machine between a good and bad multi-threaded implementation can easily be 100 times or more. And so this course, the goal is to use state-of-the-art concurrent data structures as examples to explain high-performance implementation techniques and surprising performance pitfalls that can come up. And uh, so by the end of the course, students should finish with knowledge of uh, linearizability. This is a correctness definition for concurrent algorithms because in order to write good concurrent code, multi-threaded code, we actually have to be able to reason about what it means to be correct. And then also sort of uh, you'll build up some knowledge of practical concurrent data structures. Uh, and, you know, in some sense, these data structures are both examples, test beds to show you high performance implementation techniques. And they're also just something good to know, because just as data structures are great building blocks for your programs, concurrent data structures are great building blocks for your multi-threaded programs. And we'll also try to capture a lot of, uh, you know, information about how data structures and concurrent data structures interact with various aspects of real systems, including thread scheduling, memory allocation, processor caches, and, you know, modern uh, non-uniform memory architectures, multi-socket architectures. Okay, so a little bit about the core structure. The first phase of the course, uh, eight weeks are going to consist of 17 pre-recorded video lectures. And it's sort of funny, uh, I actually just by chance recorded all of these lectures live last time I taught the course a year ago. And so that's what these video lectures are, although I'll re-record one of them. Uh, so these video lectures are going to be made available to you. Uh, they're in front of a live audience and the, some of the students actually ask questions in them. And so it's a little bit hard to hear the students because they aren't mic'd up, but you can listen to their questions and hear some of my answers. And of course, you know, every class asks different questions. So I'm going to do live weekly Q&A sessions where students can ask questions and I'll answer them. And these will be recorded for students who can't attend. And assignments will be submitted online. On Marmoset, we have these programming assignments, and this is actually something we did last year as well. Um, so this is actually tried and tested. This isn't sort of sketchy, uh, you know, hacking together, uh, you know, new Marmoset setup uh, for this year. This is tried and a nice tried and tested approach, and uh, we're also going to have uh, sort of the theory components of assignments will be submitted uh, via CrowdMark. Uh, the second phase of the course. Uh, is going to consist of paper reading and presentations and discussions. So the students are going to pick, you know, a paper to present, and the presentation will be quite short. Uh, and the emphasis is really going to be on discussion. So the idea is you come to class having read the paper enough to be able to sort of discuss it meaningfully with, you know, a, sh a short presentation to remind you of the core ideas. And students will write a review of one paper per class, and it doesn't have to be a long review. And then I'll also have office hours on demand as well as Piazza. There's no textbook. There are some supplementary readings provided, but most of them are optional. Okay, so the topics we'll cover. Now there's quite a few of them. I'll try to go through them relatively quickly. So sort of the background material, we'll talk about the asynchronous shared memory model of computing, linearizability, which is a correctness definition, you know, atomics, which are certainly a hot topic these days. Uh, and then we'll start to get into data structures like a simple counter data structure, 
And we'll talk a little bit about systems. We'll talk about cache coherence, false sharing, padding, locking, instruction reordering. Then we'll get into the algorithmics, lock freedom, stacks and queues, relaxed ordering and bags, a little bit of graph algorithms, just touching on it briefly with breadth first search. Then we'll talk about unordered maps and ordered maps, you know, hashing and linked data structures and all sorts of surprising challenges that arise with those. And then of course, we're talking about these sophisticated lock free data structures. So reclaiming memory with lock-free data structures uh, is an interesting beast and we'll talk about that. And then we'll talk about some advanced techniques, multi-word atomics, new hardware features of modern processors like hardware transactional memory, sophisticated synchronization protocols like optimistic locking, uh, advanced data structures, bleeding edge concurrent data structures like binary search trees that have lock-free searches. And along the way, we'll pepper in sort of concurrency tools like OpenMP and debugging tools and performance analysis. Uh, as for assessment, we're going to have the current plan is 50% assignments, 25% for a paper presentation, 15% for paper reviews, 10% for participation. Uh, this is the same uh, assessment that I used last year, but if I sort of decide partway through that maybe it's not capturing what we wanted to capture, it may be tweaked slightly. Uh, and finally, some last details. There's no mandatory background requirements for this course, uh, but you know students are going to program in C++, and so some good C background is desirable. Uh, as for the breadth requirement for this course, it's actually kind of interesting. This course, because it's this interesting hybrid of theory and systems, it can actually count as either an algorithms and complexity course or a hardware systems course. And so you can sort of uh, do the course and you have really up until the end of the course to decide which of these two things you want it to count for in your breadth requirement. And uh, just a little tip, uh, the capacity usually fills up quickly, so get in while you can. Uh, and actually, since I have all these lectures already recorded, if you want a preview, I've linked the first lecture here just so you can sort of get a sense for whether you like my style or whether the material seems interesting to you. Uh, and just a minor note, the recording's from a year ago, so the assignment schedule might be different this time. Uh, and with that, I'm done. Thanks for listening, and I hope to see you in the winter.